What's up, Fred? How's everybody going? Uh, got a few different things going on. So we'll be doing a, a little bit of tasting because we got some samples sent in from uh, from Broken Barrel Whiskey Company. So we'll be checking out and see what they have going on. Um, so we've got six different samples we're going through, but I'm also here to kind of answer questions um, as people want to ask as they come here. This, I don't know, it was just an interesting idea somebody had thrown out on Patreon to say, why don't you just come and answer questions that anybody has? And I said, that's probably not a bad idea. So I've got Instagram Live, TikTok, and then YouTube and Facebook right here. So I'm trying to go through uh, a few different places. So Burns, you guys ever had Pappy's 14? Um, unfortunately, I haven't seen that one. That's a new one. <laughs> keep going with the jokes too. We'll uh, we'll keep some some good entertainment going on here. So good to see we got other people joining from uh, a lot of these different platforms. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of just get started because you don't want to see me here just doing nothing. But if you have questions, go ahead and answer them. I've got three different cameras set up, so I'm going to try and answer them as I go through here. Um, but I've got six different samples, all from Broken Barrel Whiskey Company. So I've got a Bourbon finished with rum cask staves. So that one's a little camera, kind of hard to see. Um, there's one with uh, port finish. Well, I mean, it seems like everybody's doing port. There's, I don't know if I'm too excited about that one. Um, another one with port. We've got this one finished. Another one with port. And there's a rum cask. And a another rum cask. So six different samples, but we'll go through and we'll try them all. Um, so Brian asked, quick background on Broken Barrel. So I did a little bit of research on Broken Barrel and what they did. So they do source, if I'm not mistaken, they do source, but their, uh, their shtick or their kind of like what they do that's interesting or different or unique is they take different barrels and they break them down um, and then they rebuild them stave by stave. So if you know when you get a 53 gallon barrel, it's usually made of, I think like 20, 20, 22 or 27 staves, something like that. And so what they do is they take all the rings off and then they rebuild them. And so they're probably taken from a bunch of different rum casts, a bunch of different port casts, whatever it is. But that's the idea behind broken barrel. So let me go ahead and I'll pour one real quick since there were so many with pork port. I'm just going to go ahead and do a port one first because why not? Uh, let's see. Jerry says, what do you consider the best newer bourbon? It's easy. It's Pursuit United. It's the best one out there right now. But I do want to say on that note, thank you everybody that did purchase um, all 115 cases, 690 bottles have sold out on seal box. And so they're only available still on a few shelves around Kentucky, Tennessee, Texas, and Georgia. So cheers, everybody. Glad you liked it. Let's see. Uh, Jeffrey says, I have two bottles from Broken Barrel, the cash strength, and the cask of Amontillado. Both are very good. Well, good. I'm looking forward to this one. So I just poured uh, a port finish one here real quick. And you get a lot of port on the nose. Actually, it's, it's a pretty good. Pretty good amount of port. Yeah. Okay. Well, stay corrected. I actually enjoy this one pretty well. So there's also 116 proof, um, port finished. It's got like notes of chocolate. You have to get that port on there as well. It's pretty good stuff. I think there's a little bit of, um, there's definitely some alcohol vapor, alcohol burn that you get on the back end as well. Um, TJS package store. I have a couple of questions. What do you think of pin hook and smoke wagon? Good questions. So I am a fan of, of all the brands. I'm a big, big fan of MGP. Um, I just feel that there's a lot of MGP out there and you've just got to find something that's different. Like what makes your particular aspect of doing something with MGP unique now, I know Pinhook, they started off with MGP and they will eventually start releasing their own stuff because they have got, uh, they've been doing contract distillation over at Castle and Key. So they'll be doing their own stuff here relatively soon. 
Uh, Smoke Wagon, I don't really know. I, I mean, hats off to Aaron. Hats off to whatever formula that he's figured out because people go crazy over Smoke Wagon. It's seven-year MGP. I don't know why people would go crazy over that, but hey, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dog you if you're if you're selling and making making good stuff. So hey, I mean, it's all power to him. Let's see. There's another question over here from uh, Chedwin. Thoughts on four rows of small batch select? It's awesome, great stuff. You can actually. I posted a video on Friday on YouTube of the top ten bourbon and rye that you need to try, and four rows of small batch select was actually on that list. So go and check that out. Uh, Texas whiskey experience. What is your favorite Texas whiskey these days? Uh, I'll tell you what. We just got. We just did a recording for Whiskey Quickie. And it was still Austin. And I was pleasantly surprised how good it was. Uh, it was very, very good. So cheers to still Austin for that. Those recordings will be coming out here next uh, next few weeks, something like that. All right. Well, this port's pretty good. All right. Well, I would say uh, I want you to do another port next to it. Because that was finished with port staves. That's finished with port staves. They're all 116 proof. So I'm wondering if anybody knows much about broken barrel. Do they are they all? Do they just bottom at 116, or is that just what it happens to be? Because I didn't really look. But these are all 116 proof. Yep, they're all 116. Well, I'll do another one with port just to see if it's uh, any different. Have I had any Garrison Brothers? Um, I have not actually had Garrison Brothers. So it's just one of those things that, you know, we get samples sent to us all the time, um, which is fortunate being in the whiskey media. Uh, but we've never got anything from Garrison Brothers. Um, I can't comment whether it's good or bad. You know, I've seen I've seen stuff on, on, on all sides, but, you know, they've been definitely making a name for themselves. So there's a, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's pretty decent, but. Again, haven't had it myself. Uh, let's see. Drammers Club, do you anticipate generally that we'll see more independent bottlers specializing in bourbon? Oh, you mean like what we're doing? Uh, it's interesting that indie bottlers are so much more prominent on the Scotch side. Yeah, it's true. Um, we started doing the independent bottling thing uh, back in 2018 for ourselves. And I think you are going to see more people do it. Um, the problem that you don't or that you, that you see here currently is that all these distilleries have there's such a there's a shortage of bourbon or quote unquote shortage of bourbon on the market so they are continually trying to keep on pumping out more and more product now that might mean we are going to have not necessarily a glut but we will have more here in the upcoming few years but places like heaven hill who used to source to everybody um brown foreman who used to let source from everybody they're not letting anybody do it anymore because they need to satisfy demand for their own product so that's probably why you don't see as many independent bottlers. Um, we've kind of carved a little bit of a niche, I guess you could say, with trying to get um, some smaller craft distilleries. But we have, you know, the power of our microphone to be able to tell more people about really what their products are. So hopefully we, we do a good service of that. So make sure you go and check out Pursuit Series over at PursuitSpirits.com. We've got two barrels up and then we're getting ready to do uh, five more barrels this week. Um, of getting labels made and stuff like that that'll be coming out over the next few months. Uh, let's see. There's another question over here from P. Long. Do I drink any scotch or do I stick with bourbon? Uh, well, I mean, we are bourbon pursuit. However, we have done a few different uh, podcasts on scotch. Uh, we did one with Dr. Rachel Berry last year who uh, takes care of Glendronic um, and Ben Riek and stuff like that. So Master Blend over there, super, super smart lady. Uh, it was a pleasure to be able to do that. And it's one of those things that you had no idea that you're interviewing somebody that's like so rad for so long. Um, we also filmed another podcast we'll be releasing later this year uh, called Bourbon, or was it Scotch for the Bourbon Drinker? Uh, so shout out to Chris Piriguni, who was a, a supporter of ours, but he's also single malt savvy on Instagram. And so he came on and we, and he actually sent me samples of Scotch and we actually got to try them and and kind of go along the path now i i know for a fact that i do not like peat hate peated whiskey can't stand it uh there's a few peated bourbons out there i don't want them you can you can take them back home so 
Uh, let's see. Blackwater bitters. Use our bitters. Send me some bitters. I'll use them. I swear. I love bitters. We use uh, black walnut and uh, Percu. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, all you know, a bunch of the few brothers. Uh, all those things to make a bunch of uh, cocktails and stuff like that too. Uh, Paul Scott asked, "How hard is it to get Colonel Taylor?" Um, depends on your part of the country. Depends what you're looking for. Small batches accessible from time to time. Louisville sucks. I'm telling you all right now, like coming to Louisville and thinking you're gonna go bourbon hunting, like don't don't do it. You're there's nothing here. So anything from the Sazerac line, just anticipate and never finding it. Um, but I'm a big fan of E.H. Taylor, the barrel proof offering. I've had a few single barrels. They've been okay. Some are off, some are on. Um, the tube probably really is what gets most people. Um, but I've also been fortunate that I've had some of the limited offerings like uh, Cured Oak and Warehouse Survivor and all those, and they've all been fantastic. So, so always hats off to the Sazerac people. All right, so I'm going to keep going here. So this is uh, the second port finish one. I'm going to kind of go back and forth between the other one. All right, I do feel like they're different barrels. Because this one has a much more pronounced nose. So thankfully, they didn't just send me like a bunch of the same samples of stuff. So at least I know that there's a little bit of different stuff here. Uh, Colorado Rocky says, hello from Colorado. What are we enjoying? I'm sipping on some Larceny. Cool. Uh, so we are doing a tasting of six different barrel samples coming from Broken Barrel. It's a company that literally breaks down the barrel and will put all the stays back together to remake the barrel. And then they dump their aged whiskey already in it to do a second round of finishing and stuff like that. And so we're tasting this because um, they asked if we want to actually do a private barrel and get a buy a whole barrel of this. So far, it's things are looking up. So I'll, I'll say that. Nate says, uh, sending praises for the BP Patreon community, newly joined over a month ago. Sweet, Nate. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. We uh, always love having more people and, and joining the community. It's getting bigger by every day. I'm always surprised. I should make the, let's see, I should make the trip to Paducah and check out Barrel and Bond. Uh, I, I really want to come to Paducah. I've got uh, one of my best friends from college, lives in Paducah. Um, he owns uh, one of the markets uh, over there. Um, it's, the name's slipping me right now, but Andy Carlos out of Paducah. He's one of my old buddies from, from college. Awesome guy. So Midtown Market, that's what it is. So I haven't been to Paducah in a while. All right. The second barrel I didn't like as much as the first. Uh, let's see. There's another few questions coming over here. Brian Clark says, where can I purchase uh, Pursuit United in Louisville? I'm about out and need a refill. Uh, Total Wine, Evergreen, Cox's, I believe they all have them right now. Uh, where close to Louisville is a good place to bourbon hunt. Westport Whiskey and Wine is a great place if you are coming to Louisville because they have a huge tasting bar with all their barrel selections. And so you can actually try before you buy on a lot of them. And they're relatively aggressively priced. Um, Liquor Barn does the same exact thing too. So instead of going to a bar uh, and paying the traditional, you know, 35% markup and say, just say for instance, like Maker's Mark at a bar or at a, at a restaurant costs like nine to $11 for a pour, usually at Westport or at liquor barn, you're going to like, it's like four, four dollars, five dollars. But Maker's Market is an example. I'm talking about like all their barrel selection. So it's a really cool place to, to be able to go and t test that stuff out. Uh, Erz guy said, ever had Little Book before? Yes, I have. Uh, it's inconsistent only because they're all different batches. However, I think Freddie No does a really good job in what he's trying to do. And they get to, they're bringing out uh, tons and tons and tons of uh, new experiments and types of whiskey that they're just finding in warehouses. So it's going to be fun to actually see the progression of that and how it's going to keep going. But yes, I have had some of the, the little books before. They're good. Let's see. Spidey says, why have the prices of bourbon gone up in recent years? Well, I mean, that's, that's an easy one to get to. Um, so you've got the overall demand, supply and demand is just always going to take it up. But if we look at the history of what bourbon's been in a consumer market, it's been relatively even keel. So if you're thinking of uh, a common person's drink, knowing that it's going to be a $30 bottle. Well, that's just what it's been. Bourbon had never fetched the prices that they're fetching now. So thinking that a bourbon bottle was going to sell for $2,000 was just unreal. It's unheard of 
uh, 10 years ago that nobody would ever price anything like that. Um, but now you're starting to see what we consider more of the premium age stuff coming out. And so people care about it and they want to buy more of it. And that is, of course, going to drive the uh, the cost up. Now, the funny thing is, is when you go and you talk to other master distillers, you listen to podcasts, you listen to Fred No, you listen to Jimmy Russell, you listen to all these people that have been in the industry forever. They're always going to say some of the sweet spots between like seven to 10 years old. After that, a lot of them don't want it. Um, and if you're tasting a lot of uh, whiskey that are coming from these massive distilleries, a lot of them don't actually start turning good until they turn around six, seven years old. And so that is kind of why you also have this idea. It's a, it's a consumer mindset too, where you think, oh, well, if it's 12, it's going to be better. If it's 24, it's got to be insane. It's not really the case. Um, you don't see a lot of high age bourbons because bourbon doesn't age as well as scotch does in regards to the climates. So that's why you're not going to see anything that's like 40 years plus. Um, you did have that one that came out from Buddy Thompson a few years ago that was the final reserve and it was like 44 or 46 years old. And I, knew, I got to know Buddy, got to go and, and try it with him. Uh, fantastic guy, great opportunity to be able to do it. The whiskey was not good. It smelled delicious. I mean, if you could wrap that smell up into a Yankee candle, it'd be great. But the taste was just, it was not there. It was so tannic. All right. Uh, let's see. Went to a bar in North Carolina. Had three Eagle Rares and two H. Taylors on the table. It was $120. That's expensive. That's an expensive evening for uh, three Eagle Rares and two H. Taylors. Let's see. Uh, Boston Bourbon Bitch heading to Julio's tomorrow. Yes. Tell Maloney I said hi. And tell him, tell him, you, tell him you came because of the podcast. He'll, he'll eat that up. He's a good guy. <laughs> All right. Let's see. There's some other questions over here on, on YouTube. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Brett asked, when are our next barrel picks going on sale? So we have got three coming in. Uh, we've got our Woodford Devil Oak, which, Brett, I believe you were on that one. And we've got our Knob Creek Bourbon and Knob Creek Rye. Those are the next ones that will be going on sale um, that will be available. But anybody that is interested, we'd select around 40 barrels a year as a part of our private barrel club, which is what I'm tasting right now just to make sure that we want to get a barrel list. Um, so if you're interested, go ahead and check out. There's a link in our profile that actually says all the, you know, actually how to join a club. And there's a, I made a whole FAQ page on how you can get all the information you need for it as well. All right. I think I, I think we got one more port barrel, and then I'm gonna move into something else. It's over here. That's rum. That's rum. So we got three rum and three ports, is is what I believe. Yeah. So there's two ports over there. All right. Going to the next port barrel. Uh, let's see. Another people are asking. Uh, Buffalo Trace's last drop is getting up there. Yeah, it's expensive. That's true. Not gonna, not gonna fool anybody on that one. But it's also it was one of the best bourbons that we had tried last year, 1980 Buffalo Trace. It was it was unreal, unreal. Let's see, um, TJ's package store. We just got samples of Elijah Craig 11 year old single barrel, but how it says Elijah Craig small batch single barrel. The thing is that a small batch can't be a single barrel. It is weird. Um, so the word small batch is actually not a designation. Um, so you would think that the smallest small batch could be is typically two barrels, which it is. Um, but if you want to say your small batch is a thousand barrels, you can, it doesn't really matter. There's no designation of what a small batch actually means. Um, can a small batch mean a single barrel? I mean, fuck, why not? Right. I mean, there's, there's no, there's nothing that says you can't. So it's probably just a efficiency of labeling is what you're seeing out of that. And that's why it says it on there. Uh, how does broken barrel compare to angels envy? Uh, good question. Uh, this is coming from Captain Moore on TikTok. I would say that it's, I mean, it's, it's a good run for its money only because you're getting this at 116 proof, which is probably more analogous to what you would get with angels envy's limited release every single year that comes in, you know, the, the big boxes that, you know, very ornate and stuff like that. Um, I would say it's very analogous to that. And so I would imagine what you're paying for this is going to be much less expensive because you're not paying for the box that's going to be coming with it. So I would say at this point, I'm, I'm happy with the port barrels. They're, they're pretty good. The only reason for me, I just don't think like port barrels are that exciting. 
only because everybody's doing them. Um, is it good? Yes, but I don't feel like you can really screw it up too much. Um, I'd say the only one that I wasn't the biggest super fan of, and it, it's bad saying this, was so there's a new brand called Thomas S. Moore, which is actually a revival of an old brand called Thomas Moore. It's coming from 1792. But what they do are they're doing a lot of different aging uh, in barrels. And so they have a port barrel, but they're aging them for like three years in there. And I was like, oh, this is great. Because most of the time when you age things in here, it's like six months, eight months. And that's usually about all you're doing. And I was thinking three years, like it's going to be fantastic. Um, but it wasn't. It was a little too dry um, for my for my particular taste. Um, but it was the best one out of the three that were sent of like the Chardonnay barrel um, and the other ones that came in. So, uh, minor case rye and a sherry cask is really good. I'll tell you what, we just picked a barrel over at limestone branch. So we got to go and hang out with Stephen beam and Stephen Fonte over there. So we got all, all schooled on minor case and stuff like that. And what's up nerf from, from Oklahoma. How you doing, man? Uh, let's see other questions over here. Uh, any bourbon below four years. Okay. So somebody's asking a question and it's a good one. So, any bourbon below four years has to mention the age in the bottle, right? Yes, that is correct. If it is less than four years, you have to put the age statement somewhere on the bottle. And any bourbon to be mentioned as straight bourbon has to be aged at least two years, correct? Yes, you were, you were correct there, um, Dante. So if you want to be considered a straight bourbon, it has to be aged for at least two years, but also to be considered a bourbon in general. And straight also plays into it as well as that doesn't mean it means it can't be adulterated in any way. So no... Um, flavor packets or coloring or anything like that. So that's really what a straight really means. But straight and bourbon, I mean, to be even a bourbon, you have to have that particular designation anyway. So uh, any details on these ports coming from Mike Bliss? Uh, unfortunately, no, there are, there's no details on, on what barrels these came from or regions or anything like that. Um, this is mostly just for my opportunity to actually be able to go through and, and sample these and kind of answer questions as we go through here. Um, because if we're going to select a barrel from it, I want to make sure it's good stuff. And so far, at least with three port barrels, I wouldn't be disappointed in it. It's just port doesn't excite me too much just because I feel like it's being done everywhere. Uh, Rodney's asking, are we going to be distributing in North Carolina anytime soon? I actually got a phone call from North Carolina ABC about United. Uh, unfortunately, we just don't have enough product right now to put out. We're waiting for our next batch to come in. Um, we're looking to expand into Illinois and Colorado in the next round. But beyond that, maybe Michigan. I don't really know yet. I'll tell you what, though. In future future world, yes, we will be in shelves across the United States. That is, that is the goal. So 2026 is when we really blow this thing up because we're putting down all a bunch of new make right now to actually start making that happen. Uh, let's see. Angels Envy. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Um, there's some more questions over here on TikTok. Let's see. What's your go-to bourbon that you're hundred percent sure will be on the shelf? Uh, I would encourage you. I, I answered this a little bit er, earlier. PS bros, 1979. Um, I released a YouTube video. Uh, so go to uh, youtube.com slash channel slash bourbon pursuit. Just find us there. And I released a video on Friday called the 10 bourbons and rise you need to try. And so it's got everything from anything wild Turkey to, um, uh, Pikesville rye, um, Elijah Craig 18 is even on there. So go and check it out. There's, there's a, a few different, a few different ones that are on there. Elijah Craig 18 is like the, the reach if you will, but there's a lot of them on there that are regular everyday shelfers that I try to point people in the right direction to. Uh, let's see. Uh, Luxury cigar clubs. Do you do you do any pairings with cigars? I don't, unfortunately. I I am not a I'm not a cigar connoisseur by any means. But I do know people that are cigar connoisseurs, and so they're very very good at it. Um, you can actually check out an old podcast we did called it was a called Bourbon, what was it? Bourbon Trail meets Cigar Road, something like that. We did it with Jake's Cigar Bar out of Lexington, and a lot of good information out there on actually getting uh, cigar and bourbon pairings. Just kind of like an educational process. So you can go to bourbonpursuit.com. You can check that out. Uh, and Mintz asks if I've ever had Doc Swinson's. I have not. So I cannot give any, any good indication there. Uh, Barstool's Bourbons asks, do you agree with Fred Minnick that finished bourbons aren't bourbon? <sighs> I 
hate taking sides. I hate taking sides. Um, I don't agree that it's not not bourbon. Now, I do agree that there should be a designation or a category for finished bourbons and that they shouldn't be compared to or in the same competition as just straight bourbon whiskey. So if a bourbon is finished in anything, this should go into its own category, its own designation, um, which technically it is. Because if you go and you look at like Angel's Envy on the TTB, it is considered a whiskey specialty. It is not a bourbon. So even by definition of TTB, it's technically not a bourbon. So anything that says that, it says bourbon whiskey finished in XYZ kind of barrels. Uh, Britt Hall is asking, what is my bourbon called? You can go to PursuitSpirits.com. We had released a new blend called Pursuit United. Uh, unfortunately, it just sold out online. We just sold like uh, almost 700 bottles of it, but there's about another 1,200 or so that are floating around the country. Um, so you can go and check that out. There's also a few different single barrels we do that's part of the Pursuit series. So thank you so much. Oh, Devin says, oh my God, really handsome. I appreciate it. Um, let's see, small batch in a glass. What is that? Is there any way we can share a barrel with you guys? TJ's, I guess send me a message. We'll see what we can get into. Um, we can We can get into some... Some fun stuff there. Uh, how do you get started learning? This is from the Boston Bourbon Bitch again. How do you get learn? How do you start learning with tasting different notes and profiles? Um, I would say that we are fortunate that we've just been doing this in a while, and we just taste and taste and taste and taste, and you end up just kind of like getting a, a, a knack for this. But there are a lot of good resources out there. Um, if you're looking for something that's more guided and you want somebody kind of like teach you through the process. There's, there's people like Fred Minnick and Peggy No Stevens and um, a few different others that can always point your way that if you're like looking for somebody to like have it for like a dinner party or something like that, very, very good. Um, there's also a few different kits out there. Um, if you go to aromaacademy.us, that's like a very, very official one. Like they, they have got like nosing strips and like all this other kind of stuff and you can kind of like train your nose to like smell different things. And then there's also kind of one that you can get off of Etsy. It's called the Nose Your Bourbon Kit. And it's kind of like a, a beginner's way to get into it. And so you can kind of use that as a way to kind of start training your palate and training your senses. But I will always be the first to say that Ryan is the superior taster of the duo between us. I think it goes Fred, Ryan, and then I'm way down here at the bottom. I know when I taste good whiskey, I'm not the best at actually translating it into what I'm tasting or, or anything like that. All right. So... Before we get spend too much time on this, we're like 30 minutes in. I'm just answering questions, but I'm going to make sure the last uh, port finish here compared to the first port finish. So there's a little bit more alcohol vapor on this one. Same thing, like more chocolate on the back end. It's pretty good. Like a mixed berry as well. And for the first one again. I would say the only thing that I wish these had a little bit less of is a, is definitely a little bit of an alcohol vapor, a little bit of a burn. Um, if I had to guess the ages on these, they're going to be somewhere around six to seven years old. Just a guess. But I'll never really know because it's sourced. So take it for what it is. All right. Uh, there's a few more questions coming in. Let's see. John said, great review of the 10 bourbon and rise. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, what distributors are you working with for Pursuit United? Um, so if you're in Kentucky, it's going to be Heidelberg. If you're in Tennessee, it's Fireside. In Texas, it's Texas True. And if you're in Georgia, it's Georgia Crown. So those are the four states that we're at right now for Pursuit United. So if you want to find it on the shelves, those are the last places that you can find it right now. Uh, of course, we usually like to hook our good friend Blake up at seal box with everything, but unfortunately, everybody else beats you to it. So 690 bottles sold out there already. Uh, let's see. Matt Scott's Man Forever. What five bourbons should I start my collection with? I I can't answer that. There's That's a loaded question, man. There's just too many out there. Um, I, and I'll, I'll go back to my previous statement that I just came out with that video on Friday that said, these are the 10 bourbons and rise you need to try it and quit chasing hype. So go to YouTube and check it out. It's literally the last video that I uploaded other than this 
live that's happening right now on YouTube. So, um, and it's a 30 minute kind of video. A, it gives a little bit of background about the podcast and who we are, but then it dives into those bourbons and whiskeys and that, or, and rise that you can go out and buy. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving my way onto the, uh, rum casks. So these are bourbon whiskey finished with rum, which I'm a big fan of, of rum finish way more than port, to be honest with you. Um, why? I don't know. I just think, uh, rum has a lot of different flavors to it. It brings a lot more sweetness. Um, maybe it's cause like, I'm not a huge wine person either. Like I love a good cab every once in a while, but, uh, let's see more questions coming. Have I had lock stock and barrel 20 year rye? I saw a bottle liquor barn for almost $400. And I want your opinions. Brian, I wish I could give you an answer, but I have never had that. And $400 is, it's a tough one. And I wish I could say you could go and try it, but I have no idea. I can't help you out there, man. All right, here we go. First, first room finish one. Hmm. Well, the nose actually like the port ones more. There's not a huge overly rum influence on this. At least that I'm getting on the nose. A lot more ethanol. Uh, he's asking the rum finish. Hey, uh, hey from Long Beach, California. Hate everybody in California right now. You guys have way better weather than us. Uh, Mike Smith, am I catching a buzz yet? No, I'm not catching a buzz yet. We do this like every other day, it seems like, so. It takes a while to uh, start doing that, even at 116 proof. Let's see. There's another one from Friendly Steve. Four rows of single barrel is a fabulous place to start. I agree. Um, you can. We were actually so. Hey, uh, I guess do a quick little update on on that. So for our, our single barrel club, we finally got our, our our allocation for four roses, at least for the first half of the year. Um, so we're gonna have four barrels available for we're gonna be doing single barrel selections at four roses. So. Very happy about doing that. And shout out to Mandy and everybody at the Four Roses team that makes those so fun and so educational and great for everybody that's able to join us. So we're going to set two trips up and on each trip, we're going to select two barrels. So always happy to be able to do that. Let's see some more things coming in here from the Instagram side. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, thoughts on old tub. Uh, I haven't had old tub, um, but if it's the same old tub you're thinking of that came out in like a 750 for like $15. I mean, I guess like if you want to use it to make a punch with or do something like that's probably what it's great for. I, I personally, I don't really know how many $15 bourbons that I look back on and think like, Oh, these are, these are the best bourbons I've ever had. It, it's $15 for a reason. Let's see. Rumors of old force or 1920 might get more limited or even allocated. Heard anything about that? So it did, 1920 and 1910 both became limited when they first launched um, like a year, year and a half ago because they didn't know like what the demand was going to be and it completely overshot what they thought it was going to be. And so now they are, they've crept back up and I don't, from, from what I've seen, it's been on the shelves and it's been on the shelves for, you know, the same price. So I don't see a reason why why it would actually become more limited or allocated. But then again, I'm not in the retail or distributor side. I don't really see that stuff. I just, I just hear it all and, and or hearsay and, and what, what's kind of coming down the pipe. Uh, more questions coming over here. Just picked up good times, honey, uh, ever tried. I have not had good times, honey, whiskey Diz. Uh, oh, okay. Some people, YouTube and, uh, Facebook, you can't see, but yes, um, you can see my, my buddy up here, I got a little Westy named Walter, so I've got my shrine to him above my uh, fireplace over here. All right, how's the rum finish? Finally, I need to actually taste this now instead of answering questions. It's not bad. I think I had a bad bad pour there though like it switched too far in the back of my throat it's 
So all I felt was uh, just a good amount of alcohol burn. All right, try this again. It's better. There's um, almost like a sugar cane taste to it. Like if you um, if you ever ordered like a mojito, and and you get like a, that sugar cane that actually comes into it, and you like chew on it, like that's kind of what I get on it a little bit, which is fun because. Who doesn't like chewing on sugar cane if, if you have it and you just gnaw on it? Chart Oak, what's going on? How's it going? Let's see, TG's Packet Store. You're located in, in Georgia. So we actually shipped United to Georgia. So talk to uh, Georgia Crown. Put it in your store. Okay. It's not bad. Do I like it more than port? I don't think so. So far, I like the one of the port barrels the most. But let's go ahead and I'll go to the uh, the next one. So this one, put it in this camera first. Um, so you can see it's kind of got I got washed out. Little uh, little problem during shipping, but it's okay. It made it. There's John. John said the vibes are looking good. I hope you like it. I tried setting everything up with like, if you're on YouTube and Facebook, I tried setting it with like the DSLR and trying to make it really nice, but I can't tell if it's coming through choppy or if it's okay. So hopefully, hopefully it's okay. It's the first time I'm actually trying to do it. All right. Next rum cask finish. Uh, Sean asks, is there any United in Louisiana? No, there's no, there's not any United in Louisiana. It only went to, we had sent 115 cases to seal box. We sent after that, it got a lot lower. Um, like in regards to like between 60 to 75 cases between the other, other States, but Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, and Kentucky, but we will eventually get nationwide. It's just, it's going to take some time and we, people need to sell us more barrels of whiskey. That's just what it comes down to. All right. This rum barrel is a little bit better on the nose. Um, more dried fruits and figs. I enjoy it a lot more. Yep. This one's better. I would put that in my... Top of the all of them so far. Yep, it's good. It's good. It's easy. That's an easy one. Sometimes it's, it's just good. Like when you know you found it, like you found it. Like there's, you don't have to sit there and start scratching through other ones. That's the great thing about like doing barrel fix is like if you know you found it, like you don't have to be like, oh gosh, is there another one? Be like, no, you're good. Go with your gut sometimes on some of these. All right, so here's some other questions coming in. What's all the hype with Blanton's? Finally got a bottle and don't see the hype. Hey, CZales82, you finally figured out the mystery to bourbon. Because we haven't figured out why there's so much hype either. But, hey, you know, people love the – don't be wrong. The bottle's nice. The topper's nice. It is the best marketing in bourbon. But the whiskey is – it's good, but it's average. So don't don't fall for the hype there. And make sure you go check out the video I posted on Friday. Uh, what's up from Connecticut? Hey, armchair. Uh, what else has we got going on here? Let's see. Agreed Blanton's. Yep. Let's see. Uh, and TJ is asking which we'll talk to Georgia crown, but for which bourbon or which bourbon barrel you uh, talking about. So for pursuit United, go to pursuitspirits.com uh, and you can see that we've been featured on vine pair up rocks, um, uh, paste magazine, a bunch of those different outlets, Bourbon Review about Pursuit United. It's gotten a lot of great reviews and, you know, fingers crossed. We just keep doing that like 90,000 more times. So go and check it out. Uh, <laughs> guessing because it's because of John Wick of why Blanton's got popular. Uh, I tell you what, it's been there. Um, it's been in all kinds of media. And don't be wrong. Like, it's a sexy bottle. Like, why not? It's a, it's a great looking bottle. But I agree. Uh, it is. It's a hype bottle. Um, and if you want 
too, and you and this is what kind of got me on the path here a little bit, is that if you go and do a lot of digging, there is uh, well, I, there's actually no digging anymore because it's it's been announced. It's now available in the states, but there is Blanton's Gold, which comes in I think at 103 proof or maybe 110. I can't remember because the standard is 93. And then you've got Blanton straight from the barrel, which is a barrel proof offering of Blanton's that is 125 to 140 proof, and it is fantastic. But those are the ones that will ruin other Blanton's for you. So if you're looking to just try to chase it, then just go for those ones. There you go. Bourbon is for Vesa. Pursuit United is still available with specs in the Dallas area. So there we go. So there's still someone sitting in Dallas. Thanks for uh, letting everybody know. Uh, let's see. Other questions coming in. Gold is 103. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. I don't know all these off the top of my head. I just got to guess sometimes. And Blanton's gold is never better than Wild Turkey 101. Uh, that's what somebody said. So uh, it's true. And that's the great thing is you should really do blind tastings. And you should see if you like Blanton's for Blanton's or if you like Blanton's because of the bottle. All right. Last sample on this one. And then I'm going to hit the, hit the uh, final rum one here. Yep, it's still the leader. It's good. Almost has like a, um, like a good like tobacco leaf. You know, you put a tobacco leaf, uh, you know, just part of the cigar in your mouth, like a Maduro or something like that, and you kind of like get that taste coming out of it. I know earlier I said that you know I don't do a whole lot of like bourbon cigar pairings, but that one kind of like really jarred my memory of of finding that particular note out of it. All right. Look at Danny's Candies. Got a bottle of Pursuit United from Sealbox. Really good blend. Thank you for supporting us. and glad you enjoy it. All right. Last sample here. I'll tell you what. At least at this point, I would say that we are going to do a barrel of this. I don't know what it's going to be, but I don't think I'd be disappointed in, in any of these. Whether we go the port or the rum finish route, I'm not too sure. But... Happy to know we can do this. Uh, let's see. Any other questions on the TikTok side? I'll scroll back up. Um, get Pursuit Bourbon in Columbus, Ohio. I, I wish I could. Um, we're going to be working on Ohio soon. We know that Ohio is actually a very big market for us, only because we can look at some of the demographics of where people are listening to the podcast. And Ohio is a very, very big territory. Uh, surprisingly enough, Ohio is bigger than like New York and California and some of those other ones. So, uh, I know that people in Ohio love their bourbon, and since we are already working with Heidelberg in Kentucky, we are going to be getting and Heidelberg distributes to Ohio as well. So hopefully we can cross that bridge relatively soon and, and start doing that. Uh, let's see. Whiskey Dis says, I've not seen Pursuit Series in East Tennessee yet. Um, it's only going to be in like Nashville, Chattanooga area. So it's not going to be in like Memphis or anything like that. Tennessee is a little bit weird with distribution, like they have to, they have to like break out certain like areas and people will have to like stick their claim in an area. I don't really know. It's like a game of war or something, but let's see. So there's a few questions here on Instagram. We get to these two. Uh, let's see. So you guys buy barrels and just bottle them. Or are you guys involved in the distillation process? This is coming from uh, Gabriel Anthony. So we are independent bottlers, meaning that we do, and this is one thing that we have always said that we do not want to be distillers. And that's because people go to school for a very, very long time and they are engineers, they are chemical, they are chemists and they are scientists and they know what the hell they're doing. We know when we taste good whiskey and we don't want to be a part of that whole, the whole startup process of actually making the whiskey. But at the very end of it, we know what to do with the final packaged goods. And so we, do a lot of the single barrel selection process and as well as actually doing our own blends of taking finished whiskey and making them something unique and something different. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, but we do not want to be a part of the distillation process. We will never open a distillery. I know never say never, but like no, uh, we have no dreams or aspirations of ever doing that. Uh, cruise custom flags. What do y'all do with the empty barrels from the picks? Uh, good question. You should probably send me a message because we do nothing with them. We have no way to get rid of uh, all these barrels that we do select. 
And once we get to the point where we are doing uh, dumps of 300 barrels for United, we don't know what the heck we're going to do with 300 empty barrels of bourbon. So send me a message and we'll see if we can't make something work. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, let me get back to the, the last sample here. Hmm. It's pretty good. It's a really weird note I picked up. I don't know why. Um, it's not like a, if anybody's ever just done like, if you take candle wax, like you're like dip your finger in like, a, uh, what are the little, the little tiny, uh, candles that just have like the little, little wick in them. And you kind of get like wax on your fingertip. You just keep doing it and you like build up layers of wax. It just smells like, it just like tastes like, smells of like wax. But it's not like a like a vanilla or whatever wax. I mean, it's just a it almost has like a wax scent to it. It's not bad. I mean, it's it's just neutral. But there is a little bit of vanilla, little stuff of that there. Yeah. I would say the second one was better. But since we've got about like Eight minutes left. So I'm gonna do so I'm gonna go back just to one more of the port barrels. I don't remember which one it was. Just compare it against. Now that I know I have port versus rum in my head, I can figure out which one I like more. Nicholas from Youngstown, Ohio. How's it going, buddy? Good seeing you. Um, let's see. I'm gonna scroll back up on TikTok. I know there's a few different other questions that I didn't answer. When did you discover that you preferred high-end whiskey over lower priced names like Jack Daniels? I don't, I think that's a misnomer. Um, I don't think that I discovered I liked high end whiskey over it. I think you end up realizing what's hype and what's not, what speaks to you and what doesn't. I think that's really what it boils down to. Now, when you say Jack Daniels, I've, I've been the first to admit that I was, you know, a Kentucky boy. Like, I'm not drinking anything else from outside of Kentucky, blah, 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 blah. Until. A lot of people were talking about Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, and I tried it, and I was like, holy crap, like, this is fantastic stuff. So, like, if you get Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, it is a great, great bottle. So, don't don't write off Jack Daniels like you never want to drink it. Jack Daniels Barrel Proof is some of the best whiskey out there. Um, and I don't think that I prefer high-end over anything else. Like, there's – if I could show you my shelf, like, it's over there. I mean, and you've probably seen pictures of it before if you've paid attention. I mean, I've got everything from – $20 bottles to $2,000 bottle, $2, bottles over there. And it, it just depends on what you're in the mood for uh, and what you feel like. You know, there's not to say that some are more complex or better than the other. There's just sometimes that you know what you like. And that's also one of the things that I don't like to hear is like, what's your favorite bourbon? Well, at this point, I, I, I know my palate well enough that if I want something chocolatey, I know what to go for. If I want some more fruity, I know what to go for. If I want something to like have a very like deep, rich oak character, kind of know what to go for. So I think that's just a, it's a learning process that you're going to find out when you go through this in your own journey. Uh, let's see. Any other questions kind of coming through here? People talking about Weller Special Reserve. I'll pass on that. I talked about that in my, my last video I posted on Friday. Let's see. Uh, Megan says, tuning in from Windy City. Love the pursuit. Cheers. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, let's see. Ryan Angel says wax. Definitely not sold on wax. Uh, and yes, tea light candle. Tea light was what I was thinking of. Thank you, Brian. Um, yes, the little tea light candles. And you kind of just like kind of get that build up of wax. I kind of had in the last rum barrel. But when I go back over to the, the port. Yeah, unfortunately, I think I'm going to like the port over the, the rum. The second rum barrel, I'll try it one more time just because, but just to make sure if I'm not going crazy. But that one I just poured at the port was actually really good. More than I liked of the rum. Uh, Bourbon Cerveza asked, don't know if somebody already asked, but when will the next Pursuit United be? Um, well, if, if it's going to be released, it will it taste differently. Uh, so we are targeting, fingers crossed, targeting around May, 
is when we're going to start dumping those barrels or hopefully have them ready. We've got two thirds of the components ready to go. We've just got to wait for the other third. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting the barrels. We're kind of like in this limbo year, if you will. Uh, the limbo year means that we are working with all of our partners and all of our partners are trying to work with us. However, nobody anticipated demand of anything. And so they are trying to figure out what they can allocate and what they can give us. So we're in this very much like a limbo period um, until hopefully next year in 2022, when there's going to be a lot more things that open up. So uh, we are targeting May for the next run. It was supposed to be March, but we're, we're going to miss that mark. I can tell you that right now. Uh, is it going to be tasting different? Our goal with United was to always be consistent, always be the same. Um, kind of like when you think of like Weller 107, when you find on the shelf, always the same, pretty I mean, it's never always going to be the same, but it's regularly consistent. So we want to keep it consistent, um, and that's what we're, we're going for with it. So same distilleries, same process, same proof. Hopefully it all works out at the end. All right, last time with the, uh, the rum barrel here. Oh, shit. That's good, too. That second rum barrel is really good. It's it, again. It's just like a. It's just like a piece of sugar cane. Like that's what I feel like I'm chewing on. I think that there's a little bit of a, an a back end like alcohol burn, but that back end sugar cane is really there. I really enjoy this one. Um, it'd be a, it'd be a tough choice to put this one in the port barrel, but I think it, I feel good to say that. We'll select the barrel from Broken Barrel, so I think we'll go ahead and do it. Um, I want to answer like one or two more questions, and then we're going to go ahead and sign off here, and then we'll uh, kind of wrap it up. But I do want to say thank you for everybody that tuned in through all these platforms. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more things like this, just let me know, and we'll we'll see what we can do. Um, I think we're we might be relatively good on questions. So any any last last second questions that you want to uh, oh here. Where are the bottles that you're trying, MGP? Um, so this is Broken Barrel. I do not know if these are MGP. I didn't do enough research to figure out exactly where it says distilled in or anything like that because this is this is how the barrel or has how the bottles came in. So just these four ounce sample bottles, and so I don't know if it's MGP or if it's Barton or if it's whatever. All I know is it is aged whiskey that's going into a secondary barrel. So. Let's see. <laughs> I love Ricky Bobby. Uh, can't wait to can't wait for you to get to Ohio. I'm so sick of Weller Special Reserve. Me too. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, love people from Sazerac. They're great people. Uh, and then Bourbon is Cerveza. I'm glad you. I'm glad to answer any any questions for you. So happy to be able to do that. Um, and I think at this point, everything almost might be answered at this point. Uh, except from the Ricks of Rye. What is your favorite rum finished whiskey? I'll show you. Hold on one second. All right. Made a little uh, venture there to go find a bottle. And this was because uh, this was a project that we did with Barrel Bourbon uh, barrel selection that we did with them. So this is an 18 year old Kentucky whiskey. And should I say it's not all 18. It was like mostly 18 year Kentucky whiskey, but it was finished in rum agricole casks. So this is uh, the barrel that we selected. Um, so it was a, it was BH 45, 116.46 proof. And we aptly named it rum Springer. So anybody that had a chance to get it, it was, uh, it was one of my favorite, barrels that we had selected last year was the uh, that rum finished whiskey from from barrel bourbon so it was good stuff uh with that i think that is gonna do it in regards of questions i pre appreciate everybody kind of signing on and i hope you uh, enjoyed it who knows maybe we'll try to do this again next week but we'll see well i'm gonna start signing off on all these different platforms but cheers everybody if you have any other questions anything that you want to answer make sure you can send an email kenny at bourbonpursuit.com Check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Um, you can also check it out on YouTube if you want the video versions. 
And then if you're not following us on one of these two or three or four different platforms, make sure you go and find us. Um, we're a little bit everywhere. TikTok is like more of my creative outlet. So uh, an idea of just kind of like creating funny videos to kind of put out there. So make sure you check out some TikTok. Of course, Instagram for anything that we're just taking pictures of or just taking pictures of cocktails or just happen to be out. And then of course, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we actually have a new podcast we're gonna be recording tomorrow night, uh, the Bourbon Community Roundtable number 50. Four, I think maybe number 53. I don't know whichever one it is. Uh, that's happening tomorrow night, Monday at 9 p.m. on YouTube Live. And we're going to be talking about just a potpourri of bourbon topics. So cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.